So the uh, the unit that we're going to begin revolves around exponential functions, which is a little strange to me because really where I'm from, you didn't get one. That's more of an algebra two thing. Algebra one thing. So just understand when you name a function, the the way it, it gets its name is what's happening to the variable. So like. So far, we've seen linear functions and we've seen quadratic functions. What happened on a linear function? It was being taken to the first power. What happened on a quadratic function? Um, it was being taken to the second power. Okay. Now, when we get into exponential functions, that's what we'll start tomorrow. The variable is going to be the exponent. You're going to see a number now, and that's not going to be an unknown. It's going to be a number that's being taken to the x power. So, as such. We need to review our properties of exponents. So let's go one by one. And then we'll practice a few of these. But it, I mean, there's a lot more examples on that packet than we can possibly go over in a period. But if we can just go over an assortment of them, you should be able to do the rest on your own. If you want to, you don't have to do that. You can do that like that. But I just I overloaded it with examples. Um, this first one you're actually probably not even going to use, but it's just good to know. Um, you should have been taught this at the beginning of the year. Any radical can be rewritten as an exponent if it's a fraction. What, what's the name of this little number that's here on the, in the corner on a radical? It's on a square root you never see. If you were with me last semester, this, you should have learned before I got here. The little number. And you don't know what that's called? The index? Never heard that word before? Yeah, that's called an index. That's an exponent. So any any radical can, I can rewrite it as an exponent as long as the uh, index is the denominator, and then whatever exponent the number had originally, that's the. Uh, that's the we don't have to really worry about that too much today. Leave me alone. Okay. If you're multiplying the same base, what are you allowed to do to the exponents? If I'm multiplying two numbers that have the same base, what am I going to do to their exponents? Add them. If I'm dividing, we're going to do this a lot today. If I'm dividing the same base, what am I allowed to do with the exponents? Subtract them, and I'll show you a trick for that so that you don't make mistakes with the name. When you're taking a base to a power and then taking that to a power, so that when you have a power of a power, what are you allowed to do with those powers? Multiply them with. If you are taking the power of a product, if inside of a parenthesis you're multiplying product and you're taking the power of that, this property tells you that you're allowed to distribute that power. You can give that power to each number you're multiplying. That also works with division. If you're taking the power of a quotient, you can take that power and distribute it. So exponents cannot be distributed over addition or subtraction. If I'm adding or subtracting inside the parentheses, I cannot distribute an exponent. I can only distribute multiplication or division. But if I'm multiplying or dividing on the inside, I can distribute an exponent. A little bit of that today. Okay. Here, negative exponents. If you are simplifying an expression, you cannot consider an expression to be in simplest form um, if you have a negative exponent. So how do you fix it? Well, it's called a reciprocal property. Reciprocal. You change the location. If a number is in the numerator, move it to the denominator. If a negative exponent is in the denominator, move it to the numerator. If nothing is left on the bottom, cool, you don't need a denominator. But if no number is left on the top, you have to always have a numerator. One. If, there's a, if there's another number there, you just leave it. You don't, you don't always have to have a one on top. That's because there's nothing else there. Okay, what's any number to the zero power? One. Anything to the zero power is one. These are some of the ones you're going to see today. So let's do. Uh, let's start off with these pages. But I'm probably I'm probably going to jump around. I don't think I'm going to do every single one of these. Like like this first one's a little bit pointless, but I guess this is kind of just holding your hand. So you get there. 
What are we doing on all of these? We're multiplying, right? And I already told you, if you're multiplying the same base, what are you allowed to do? Show me, if you're multiplying the same base. What are you allowed to do if you're multiplying the same base? Add the exponents. But this is the, the first one they show you. Hey, what is 2 to the 8 the same as? It's the same as saying 2 times 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 2. And then you can put that into your calculator. I think that's 2 to the 6 off the top of my head. Does anybody have a calculator you can check me on that? Ready, set, calculate. Yes. Four out of four out of five semantics agree. Okay. Um, I don't see really the point in doing number two and number three. I'm not even multiplying anything in there. But let's go to four and five. What is a to the first times a to the fourth the same as? If we learn that as long as the bases are the same, which they are, if you can add the exponents, what is that the same as? It is the same as a to the fifth. So if anything, that's what I would want you to put into the calculator. That's going to be a big number. What's a to the fifth power? Come on, Marquis, save the day. You might be the only one. 32,768. Reliance, and I'll find it. Okay, how about uh, number five? Excellent. The next question I already answered for you. Two expressions have the same factor or base, like if the base is the same, uh, what, happen, what happens to the exponents? Yeah, Adam, so now we, did, we didn't have to discover it. Papa Romero took care of you and told you that already. So let's go to part two. These are where we're going to actually start doing these things. Let's find the product of these expressions, right? So when we multiply, you would multiply any other numbers in front. What's 6 times 4? 24. As long as the x's match, which they do, you can just add the exponents. 2 plus 2? 12. Look at the next one. Here we have 3 terms. So we're multiplying, so you can just multiply, since it's the only, it's all the same operation, we can just do it in one step. Let's look at the coefficients. The coefficients get multiplied. What is 4 times negative 5 times negative 3? 60, good. Then you can add the exponents of any matching bases. So the bases that match here are the f's. What's 9f's times 6f's? How many f's would I have in total? Remember how I wrote out all those twos? So if I wrote out nine f's and then wrote out six f's, how many f's would I have in total? Fifteen f's. So f's to the sixteen. And then how many h's do I have in total? Three and two is five. Now this next one's a little tricky because here we have multiple steps. Now. Man, look, what's a variable? What is a variable? What's a variable? Yes, Jada. Okay, I know it looks like a letter, but what, what does it represent? Say it again. It's an unknown number. But just like a known number, it has feelings and... It wants to be treated just like the other number. Just, just because you don't know it doesn't mean you should be mean to it and like, disrespect it or anything like that. So, when, you know, the reason why I bring this up is because typically variables are the only numbers that have an exponent. Because if you don't know what the number is, you can't take it to a power, and thus you'll see a variable with an exponent. But we normally don't see constants with an exponent. But those are numbers too. So we could follow the same rule, but the problem here is that this and the negative 2 and the negative 3 are not the same. 
if they were the same, if they had the same base, I can add the powers, but I can't. So, I mean, as far as I know, the, the quickest way to do this would be in two steps. Okay, the first thing I would do, what number is getting taken to the second power then on the first parenthesis? What number is being taken to the second power? Not negative 2. Just 2. Because it's not in a parenthesis. So the negative stays. 2 squared is 4. x to the third, y to the fourth. But then in the next parenthesis, what's being taken to the second power? Then that full negative 3 is being taken to the second power. So that would be positive 9, x to the fourth, y to the fourth. And now once I've sorted that out, now I can simplify. Negative 4 times 9 is negative 36. How many x's do I have in total? 7. How many y's do I have in total? How'd you get those? We added the exponents. Multiply the numbers in front, add the little numbers on top. For this next one, I'm going to skip this little uh, discovery thing because we've already talked about what happens when you take a power of a power. So let's just do number 11 here. What, if I have p squared, but then I'm taking that to a fifth power, what can I do with a power of a power? Just what? Multiply it. So 2 times 5 is 10. On the one right before it, if I didn't want to go through the whole, like, ooh, ah, discovery thing, what is, uh, if I have 2 to the 3rd to the 4th, what is that the same thing as saying? Yeah, the same thing as saying 2 to the 4th. And if you probably play that in the calculator, then you can do so. Is that 4096? Bang! Okay, here, uh, power of a product. What, what, what did I tell you you can do when you take a power of a product? Now, power of a product, what are you allowed to do? Set it on the first boring slide. Poder de un producto. ¿Qué se puede hacer? Thank you, distribute it. So I can take this square. What is 2 squared? 4. But since I don't know what x squared is, I just leave it as 4x squared. On the next one, distribute the... Uh, Third power to the seven that I can do. So what's seven to the third power? Three forty-three. But you see, not only do I not know what J is, but J already has a power. So what can you do with a power of a power? Multiply good. Uh, what's 2 times 3? So, J box. Jason, any questions? B money? Any questions for you? How was your weekend? Studies? Gaming? No, not really. Okay, let's expand uh, each expression. All right. Here's where I can teach you a little trick if you listen. What did I tell you that we can do with um with if if you're dividing the same base, you can subtract, right? Okay. So there's two ways to approach this. The way I used to teach it, which is a more formal way is that you should always subtract the top exponent minus the bottom. But the problem is if you're only doing always top minus bottom, you could get a negative, and then you'd have to know what to do with the negative, which is fine. It's very doable. I used to teach it that way. But too many kids were making mistakes. So I kind of watered it down. So the way I teach it now is don't do top minus bottom. Do big minus small. Because that's going to ensure you always get a positive. Okay, so like if you look here at the two, the two is matched, so we're allowed to do this. What's bigger, four or three? Four. Four, so what's four minus three? 
So if you do it that way, and you always do big minus small, the, the, the catch is you have to leave the result wherever the biggest one was. In this case, the bigger one, the form was on the top. So I would just say two to the first, two to the first is just two on top. Nothing is left on the bottom, so you do not need a denominator. So this is just two. If you wanted to test it out to see if it worked like mathematically, two to the fourth is um, 16, two to the third is eight. What's 16 divided by eight? Now look, this, this goes to show you now, I'm gonna go ahead and do this fraction part here. This goes to show you um, what I was just talking about, about numbers being like, very, uh, like uh, uh, variables just being unknown numbers and having feelings. And Even though I know what two is, even though two is a, is a constant, when I'm dividing a two on the top and a two on the bottom, I could treat it like a variable because they match. So if I wanted to, if these were variables, I would subtract the exponent. What's the exponent on top of the two? What's the exponent? A three. What's the exponent of the two on the bottom? No, one, a one. What's, uh, and obviously the three is bigger. What is three minus one? So I'm going to put two squared, but I'm going to put it on top because that's where the bigger one was. How, how about the x's? What are the exponents for the x's? Three and one. What's bigger? Three, so what's three minus one? So put x squared, put it on top because that's where the bigger one was. For the y's, four is bigger, what's four minus two? Also two, put it on top because that's where the bigger one was. The z has nobody to play with, so that stays on the bottom. Am I done? Well, not in this case because I'm supposed to simplify. I'm supposed to do any operations that are possible. And in this case, I could still take 2 to the second power, which is 4. So I end up with 4x squared, y squared over. I already explained to you what to do with division, so you can fill out number 17 if you'd like. Let's do uh, number 18. See how the x's match? What's 10 minus 4? 10 minus 4 is 6. Because the 10 is on top, I put that on top. That leaves, really, all that leaves is a 1 on the bottom. So you don't need a 1 when it's on the bottom. You do need it if it's on the top. You don't need it on the bottom, so it stays as it is. On this next one, 12 divided by 1 is still 12, so I'm going to leave the 12 on top. For the G's, what's 8 minus 3? 5. Uh-oh. Look at the H's. What's 5 minus 4? But where's the bigger eight? Where's the bigger exponent? On the bottom. So when I put that H to the first power, I put it on the bottom. And now I'm done. 12G to the fifth over H. Look at the next one. 3 divided by 18. I cannot divide 3 by 18. I get a decimal. But I can reduce it. What's the biggest number I can divide 3 and 18 by? By 3. So the 3 becomes a 1. The 18 becomes a 6. Now the only way that that 1 is going to stay up there is if nothing else stays up. You, do, you never need a 1 on the bottom, but you might need a 1 on the top if nothing else goes up there. Let's see. Look at the x's. What's uh, 14 minus 2? 12. But the bigger one was on top, so that means I can put that on top. It also means I can get rid of a 1. I don't need a 1 anymore. Because I know that's, that, that's actually going to stay there. The y to the 11 had nobody else to play with, so... Let's skip 21. <laughs> um, write without negative exponents, okay? Well, before I worry about, remember what negative, what did I call negative exponents on that first page? 
What's the word? I, I didn't write much on the first page, but I actually wrote this word in there on the first page. The reciprocal. When you have a negative exponent, you're supposed to change the location from top to bottom, right? But if you look over here, I have the same variable. So not that you have to do this first, but what I would tell you to do first, right now we're multiplying. We're multiplying the same base. What did you learn that you can do when you're multiplying the same base? You can add 4 plus negative 10 is negative 6. Now we can fix this. What's being taken to the negative 6 power? Just the x. So nothing is going to happen to the 6. Right now, if I were to write this as a fraction, this would be over 1. So that 6 is going to be considered to be on top. That 6 is going to stay there. This is what I was telling you. You don't always write a 1 on top. If there's another number, then you leave the other number on top. So what drops down is the x. So that's going to be 6 over x to the 6. Okay, here I see power of a power. See, or, I'm sorry, power of a product. I, I'm multiplying inside, but I have a power on the outside. What did I tell you that we could do? Huh? Distribute. But if you're clever about this, and you actually look at the powers on the inside, I see a power that I haven't seen yet. What is any number to the zero power? Zero. No, it's one. So that really just cancels out. It just becomes a one, because one to the fourth is still going to be one. But what I can do is this x to the negative third to the fourth. When I have power over power, what am I allowed to do? Not to show no, there's nothing more to distribute. This thing canceled out. I only have one term in there. Multiply the, the variable. Oh, sorry, the exponents. So this is x to the negative 12. But what does x to the negative 12 become? Since now the number in front is a 1, it's not a 6 anymore, it's a 1. That 1 would stay on top. The x to the 12 would be on top because it was hot. Use you, Caleb. Power of a um, power of a quotient. There's more than one way to do this. Okay, some people look at this negative two on the outside and say, "Hey, that's a reciprocal," and they go ahead and flip the y to the top and the x to the bottom. What I would tell you to do is I would do the power of the quotient part first, which tells me I'm allowed to distribute. That's what I like to do first. So when you get to the x. That already has a power, power of a power you multiply. Show me what's negative 8 times negative 2. Uh, no, multiply. Negative 8 times negative 2. Go, Sam. Go, Sam. It is 16. So I'm going to write for right now, I'm going to write x to the 16 from the top. But then when I go to the bottom, what's 11 times negative 2? Negative 2. Am I done? No, because you cannot leave a negative exponent. So what do you do with a negative exponent? Change the location. Right now the y is on the bottom, so I'm going to move it to the top. So I just end up with x to the 16 to the y to the 22. When there's nothing left on the bottom, you don't need a bottom. You only need a k though. Everyone needs a k. Do they have things at the hawk store that cost more than four hundred dollars? Any questions there before we I want to just knock out as many practice problems as possible? Okay, let's just try to do an assortment. Look at number one. What are we doing there? What are we doing there? Number one. Well, we're multiplying. The operation here is multiplying. So when we multiply, we multiply the coefficients. 4 times 3 is 12. And then what can we do with the exponents? Add them. Because of the, all the a's match. 2 plus 3 plus 6 is 8 to the 11. Got it in one spot. Let's, uh, well, these are all interesting. I guess let's just do all of them. Let's go to number 2. Here I have more than one step. First, I have to do power of a power, because um, I'm taking that parent. Like, basically, look, how about this? 
If you see a power outside of a parenthesis, make sure that that gets your attention first. The other powers are inside the parenthesis. If you see a power outside of a parenthesis, that has to draw your attention first. So I'm going to keep e squared f to the fourth the same. But if I distribute that power, that becomes e squared f squared, the e sixth squared. So that now that I'm multiplying, what can I do to the exponents? Now that I'm multiplying, what can I do to the exponents? Add them. There's four e's and there's six f's. Number three looks like it's only going to be one step because I'm only multiplying, but when you add the exponents, how many y's are there? Three y's. How many z's are there? Negative three. One minus four is negative three. You cannot leave it that way. How do you fix a negative exponent? Flip it, yeah. So the, the y to the third stays on top. The only thing that drops is the z. Now it'll be to the positive. Right, Brandon? What do you like better, y's or z's? You never thought about that? If you think about it. Something about the fact that you're sleeping or that you're interested in sleeping, I would think you like z's more. Get it? You get it? You see what I did there? Okay, power over power, what are you about to do? Multiply, so that's going to be 10 to the negative 6, but we cannot leave that. So, uh, since now in this case the 10 does not stay in front, what would be in front is whatever number you're multiplying by whatever coefficient. So, if you just don't see a coefficient, that would be a 1. So, that would be 1 over 10 to the 6. And uh, when you don't have variables, if it's not going to be a number that takes up the whole page, you might as well just go ahead and do it. And I know that 10 to the 6 power is just 1 with 6 zeros. Also known as 1 million. What season are you on, Jada? What season are you on? Ooh, power of a power of a power. What can you do with all of these powers? Um, multiply them. Two times two times two is eight. You see me saying four and eight. That's going to be a pretty big number, so I'm not going to leave it like that. Okay, look at this next one. Jason, what's getting your attention? That there's powers on the outside. So you have to distribute it first. 2 to the 4th is 16. Then with the variables, you can multiply them. So it's 16x to the 8th. This is 3 squared, which is 9. x to the 10th. Now we can just multiply. 16 times 9 is 140. And then I can add the exponents of the three. Let's jump to number 12 since we're running out of time. Let's jump to number 12. What's going on there? Can I divide 14 by 28? No, but I can reduce it. What's the biggest number I can divide 14 and 28 by? By 14, this becomes a 1, this becomes a 2. I'll only need the 1 if nothing else stays up there. Look at the G's. What's bigger? Negative 5 or negative 7? Negative 5 is bigger than negative 7. So what is negative 5 minus? What's negative 5 minus negative 7? No. Positive 2. If the negative 5 is bigger, that goes on top. And if that's going to end up on top, that means I don't need a 1. Okay, look at the H's. What's bigger, 4 or negative 2? What is 4 minus negative 2? 4 minus negative, minus negative. What? 
six good on the bottom eight to the six. No more negative exponents because you found on top of the rear of zero. So let's do fourteen. Fourteen is also two steps because on the top we see multiplication, right? On a fraction, the last thing you should ever try to do on a fraction is a fraction bar. If anything can be done before the fraction bar, do that first. So on the top that we see matching exponents, you can add them. There's five x's on top. There's eight, uh, eight y's on top. Ooh, look at what happens. What's five minus five? So the x's actually cancel out. So the y is what's bigger? Eleven minus eight is. There's nothing else. So what needs to stay on top? Let's do 15. CZ to the negative 2. Jason, every time you see an X1 on the outside of a parenthesis, let that get your attention first. Distribute it. C would be to the negative 2, but the D already has an exponent. What's negative 3 times negative 2? Positive 6. Am I done? What can I still do? Put the C on the bottom. This is C to the 6 to the bottom C to the positive 6. I know I'm going kind of fast, but if you need to go back and watch this later tonight, you can make it easier for me. Uh, all right, let's, just, let's just finish up here really quick. 22. Let's do 22. Uh, what time is the bowling? 12. At 12 what? 12. 12. 12. All right, then let's do 21. It's shorter. Uh, to the negative 2 power, it's the same thing as saying 1. Uh, to the negative 2. Actually, yeah, let's just do this. This is one of the few times I would tell you to actually take advantage of the fact it's negative and I can flip what's on the inside. It's the same thing as saying just 2a to the third to the positive 2. Like if the 1 were to flip to the bottom, we don't need the 1. And now I can just distribute. You can do it the other way, but it's going to take longer. 2 squared is 4, a squared, and then y to the 3. If you go home and do any other any of the other ones and you're stuck and you want my help, come in the morning. And I'll help you with them in the morning. I believe a lot of the homework this week has to do with this, so if I remember correctly. I made it a while ago, but I'm pretty sure.